Well, I think I got that to finally work. So, hey everybody, it's Mark Riley here. Let's do a little Riley's Cantina on this fine Saturday. A live Q&A to kick off, you know, the big one, 2024. At least big for me. More on that now. What's up, everybody? Please, if you're watching, uh, drop in the chat, say hello, and tell me that you can hear me and see me and all is well. Uh, I had some problems with Streamlabs, and I had to reconfigure some things. And since I am a very not good technical wonder, well, I had a false start here. And so now I'm going to make sure that we are fine. So if you so desire, and if you can, please say hello by dropping in a chat, and say hello, and say, yes, Riley, we can see you, we can hear you. I'm pretty sure, hold on, hold on, I'm watching it, so it's probably working, I hear myself, yeah, it's, it's working. It is working. I am Mark Riley, and I hope you are having a wonderful 2024 to start. The start of 2024, I myself am going to have an epic 2024 because my daughter is coming in two months. Yee, the dog, the tea dog, Jimmy Rodriguez. Awesome. Thank you very much for saying and um, confirming that I am not crazy. Luis, how are you? Uh, got you, got you hearing f you from the, I uh, can't even freaking, I fucking hate this fucking heart that goes over the most, per like the word that I need to see to get the context of what you say, and yet there is a goddamn heart there that just blocks everything, but I digress. Um, I, <laughs> I'm sorry, I was listening to my wife in the other room. Uh, I am Mark Riley, and um, I am here to do a little Q&A about anything and everything that you might want to know. Uh, especially, maybe it's Star Wars, maybe it's Superman, you know me. Maybe it's Friday the 13th, you know what I like. Um, just finished a script, so we can talk about that. Uh, I was having some issues with my Streamlabs, uh, but all appears to be working. So the best way to get me, and uh, the most helpful is uh, streamlabs.com slash Mark Riley. It has an alert. You can fuck with me all you want with that alert because they're horror-themed. Um, and uh, I will be taking that and putting it towards diapers because we did some math. Holy shit. Uh, getting ready to throw our baby shower, which is awesome. We are going to be... Um, hello there, Brennan. We are going to be um, sending out uh, the invites soon, uh, tonight. For our big baby shower, my dad is gracious enough to let us have it at his house. Oh, I forgot my controller. Um, and so that's going to be fun. Uh, but uh, your Streamlabs will go to a, a very good place. And um, I will f uh, I will get the alert and I will answer anything um, that you... Within reason, folks. Uh, but give me something good. And let's have a good conversation here because... Uh, I'm excited for the new year, not just because of my daughter, but because of all the wonderful things coming. Um, you know, movies seem to be really... Ugh. I know it's hard to say when you have your marbles and your DCs that are kind of tanking at the box office, but um, it seems to be when we had Oppenheimer crush and we had Barbie crush. And then, for me, no way, uh, no one will save you, this alien horror movie that I fucking loved crush um i'm very excited for movies um i did my top 10 basically uh last couple weeks ago and there was like two sequels and the rest were like original movies and that makes me excited so i uh, would love to get anything and everything some good conversation starters best way to do it like i said is Streamlabs, mostly because i get to see i i, I get the alert and i i will see because i'm gonna play i'm almost 
fucking beating Venom. So we're going to start with some Spider-Man 2 action. Because I am crushing right now. Getting through the level. Crushing? Okay. Um, but I'm finally on the fucking third fight with Venom. And uh, as Miles Morales. And uh, that should be fun. So, um, and I'll probably do golf because it's nice and easy and relaxed and we can talk about anything but to give you a little i guess um to talk about something that's very dear to me uh hit a like would you too on this video um i lost all my monetization on this thing and um you know the analytics help so much when you like it and uh i want to get this going again jerry what's up jerry garza uh, I want to say hi to everybody, and uh, I'll try to look at the chat as best as possible. But like I said, the Streamlabs I can get, um, and it will focus me in. But um, I'm really, really, really excited uh, for the Superman movie, Legacy. Um, I haven't yet. Alan Wake, too. No. John Myers, first time live. Yoga Riley. Is that Yogi or Yoga Riley? Sure, Yoga. I married a yoga instructor, so that fits. Um, but yeah, you can ask me um, anything about my daughter or marriage or what my year was. 2023 was my best year. I wrote an Instagram post because it was just, I got married. I found out I was going to be a father. Had a great job. Um, finished my screenplay. Thank you, John. Oh, I love it. Thank you so much, my friend. Um, I finished my screenplay. It's entitled Monster for Sale, and it is a fucking dark-ass, scary movie. Don't let the title fool you. Yogi. There you go. Um, Yogi works. I'm zen. Um, but uh, this Q&A, it can be anything uh, in the movie space, Superman, Friday the 13th, Star Wars, anything you guys know me for. Um yeah, Justin, the monetization went bye-bye. They changed a lot of the rules on um, YouTube when I was gone. Um, I basically got a job as a producer, and that took all my time. <clears throat> and then um, I uh, realized when I lost it, I was like, well, that kind of is a bummer, you know. And I've, and it's so many of you were so sweet and, and kind. You know, you would hit me up every once in a while on, on Twitter or X, whatever you want to fucking call it. I don't want to call it X. Elon Musk is, has, has effectively ruined the platform. And uh, some of my job and work in producing takes me to Twitter. And um, I've seen some things that are just terrible. Just terrible. Like um, death threats and um, child pornography. And um, guess what? When you report it, uh, nothing happens. It's pretty fucking terrible. And Elon Musk, I, I think, is that is disgusting. I don't care that you want to put ads and that you, you do all these things. But when you see the most vile shit and you can't even get Twitter to remove it or X, that's a problem. So anyways, um, John, thank you. Yeah, the, the screenplay is Monster for Sale. Don't let the, uh, the title fool you. Um, it's very exciting. Um, I'm now in the middle of a rewrite, which basically I, it was way too long. It was 157 pages or something like that. And so I've been able to comb through about 36 pages of it, knocking off about 10 pages. So that's good. Um, that's a good thing. Um, so if I'm at 36 pages, knocking off 10 every 30, you know, we might actually get there. So... Um, Jerry, you want me to know uh, about... If, I think you're asking about Lincoln Riley. I can't see it with a fucking heart, man. Uh, I love Lincoln Riley. Um, I didn't... I did. I think his uh, loyalty to Grinch, the defensive coordinator, cost us um, recruits. Definitely a national ta uh, title. Um, because our defense, USC's defense, was the worst. And around 6-0... and we barely squeaked by Colorado. We barely squeaked by some lesser teams. And because of it, um, and then then it was just downhill from there. We lost six out of seven games. <laughs> I'm on a text thread with all my buddies who went to USC with me. And uh, we went to USC. And um, after 
after we lost to Notre Dame, uh, it was the defense just straight up that killed us. And I, and I texted in the chain. I went, we are going to be lucky to win two games. And those two games that I was targeting were Cal and UCLA. And we didn't even do that. We, lost, we, we only won one game, and it was Cal. And we barely beat Cal. And we lost, of course, to Washington. Rightly so. I want them to win the national tam- uh, championship against um, Michigan. Uh, Michigan, a bunch of cheaters. Let's call it what it is. Uh, no offense, Wolverines. Um, but, uh, you know. <laughs> ah, fuck. You know what she did? There it is. Jimmy. <laughs> Thank you. There it is. There it is. Thank you very much. Uh, that's the alert. That's one of the alerts that come in that will scare the fuck out of me. Uh, Jimmy, Jimmy Rodriguez or Jerry, congrats. Was watching you take down Roka and the Schmodowns. Good times. Yes. When I took down Roka, that was one of my finest moments. And I became the first. Uh, two-time champion off of that. So those are the heydays. Thank you for that, my friend. I really appreciate it. Goes right to diapers. So any uh, any Streamlabs that does come in like that, uh, you can give me a, a, a nice uh, thought sentiment or you can uh, ask a, a question and, and we'll get to that. I better um, pull out the old uh, video games and I'm going to keep talking about whatever else comes i have my wife in the next room doing some work and then she's got to do some studying and so i got some time here today it's a nice saturday i hope everybody's enjoying your saturday and even more so enjoying your uh, 2024 and i hope it's off to a, a killer start for you like i said for me it's um i was i usually get bummed after christmas because i love the, the holidays i love the festiveness the music the lights the fireplaces the presents of course And uh, this Christmas, I was like, no, no, let's come on, go, go. I cannot wait for my daughter. And last night, here's a story, made me tear up. Uh, Last night, I was, um, um, oh, I'm going to get to this, Jerry, the Longhorns fan. I want to, I want to comment on that. But last night, my daughter is now, she's getting bigger, obviously, and um, I haven't been able to really feel her kick because maybe she hasn't been big enough. But last night, she was moving, man. She was just all over the place. And um, I, uh, I went. I um, what am I trying to say? Um, I put my hands on my my wife's belly, and um, I um, felt her. Not not. Not only did I feel her, she she heard me. I said, "Daddy's here, honey. Kick for daddy. I want to. I want." And she k- started kicking. She kicked three times in a row when she heard my voice, and I went boom, 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 and started crying. Um, chainsaw, thank you. Yeah, I'm back streaming. Um, I want to do this. I want to do something very casual, which is play video games and just talk and 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 be in here and talk. So last night was one of my favorite nights. We I made some salmon for my wife, um, and um, yeah, it was just amazing. John, my favorite memory of your of you was uh, watching your content was when you streamed your reaction to the finale of Mando. Yeah, season two, um, rule of two with Mark the Sith Lord. Any chance of a reunion for old times? I I would love to sit with um, Fernandez. He asked me to, I think he wanted me to come on with um, Star Wars Theory. And um, I, you know, I'm not going to go into reasons other than I, I that's not something I want to do. Um, but with um, with Mark Fernandez, yeah, I would, I would definitely do that. I would love for an old school sit down, talk to him and just talk Star Wars. And um, maybe I can actually do that one of these days. But, you know, my, st- my stream schedule is non-existent because um, my job is pretty much my job and then I write a lot and um uh yeah so you get this kind of stream which is just chilling hanging out having fun all that um I know Big Ten Luis we're going to the Big Ten so Michigan Penn State 
Uh, Ohio State, don't forget Ohio State, right? Ohio's in there. Oh, yeah, there it is. Um, and what I was saying, uh, Jerry, right? Uh, I want to make sure. I hope for a great game, right? Uh, Longhorns fan. Um, I'll leave you with this, and then I'm going to get to stream. You know, ah, fuck! <laughs> Fantastic in the in the house. Thank you for that. Streamlabs.com slash Mark. <laughs> got me. Um, I got Jimmy and Fred Tastic in the house with the donations, and I appreciate it so much. Fred Tastic, when my wife was pregnant with twins, they moved like that. That scene of cone heads when their baby moves was amazing and scary, right? I've heard that. I've heard that, Fredtastic, that we're gonna get to uh we're gonna get to that point where it's gonna look like alien hands coming out. And she's getting there last night, like I said, the boom boom boom. It was really, really cool. Uh but anyways, Jerry, yeah, the Longhorns. Um in uh I believe two thousand five, was it two thousand five or so? Um, national championship game. One of the great national championship games of all time and um vince young i fucking hate you vince young you son of a bitch it was a back and forth game and all we needed to do was stop his ass and he ran it in and i'll never forget him running it into the corner of the end zone and we lost the game and i have never been so upset in my life at losing a game and i remember i was living in a townhouse and I was walking up. I walked halfway up the stairs wearing my jersey like I am now and fell to the ground in the stairs and laid there for like 20 minutes. I was that upset. It was rough. So rough. Anyways, uh, appreciate you uh, guys coming in and saying, I got a live show I do on my channel each week. Chainsaw says with a bunch of content creators. It would be great to you. Have you on one day, Chainsaw? I mean, I, I am honored and humbled by you asking. I have no idea and probably won't be able to, to do that with my timing. And when I do have the time, I do it here. But never say never. Hold on, I got to get my controller. Okay, uh, like I said... I'm, I, oh shit, wait, pause. <laughs> I'm playing Venom here, and um, I'm at the end here. Yeah, Fredtastic, he sure were, uh, was, that, that Vince Young fucker. Pardon my French, but gosh darn it. It just was just, just horrible. Horrible. I got center for myself. Uh, oh, good. Thank you. Enjoy your stream. Th oh, thank you, my friend Chainsaw. Chainsaw reacts. I like your, your... I hope it's all the horror talk. Cannot wait for the horror movies coming out. Uh, any horror movie. I'm like, I say it like I'm, I know the next horror movie coming out. Um, I am a horror junkie. Uh, so is my wife. And we love every Halloween. I mean, September rolls around and we're like, horror movies? And we watch every fucking horror movie there is. And um, we tried, we tried to watch a horror movie last night with Morgan Freeman, The Ritual Killer. It's on, uh, it's on Hulu, and we were like, "Well, let's watch this." I've ten minutes into this thing, I went, "No, uh, it's not a good movie." It's, it's one of the, it's poor Morgan Freeman. It's one of those movies. Uh, I, you know, it went straight to video probably, but. Um, Immediately, I was I was wondering why the director would he put, he put like five extras in this scene where Morgan Freeman is talking to a class and the extras poor poor extras or he would he would put a camera on them and just hold there for God knows why like thirty seconds and these extras I had one guy this one guy was just I don't know what he was reacting to but it wasn't Morgan Freeman. Oh, it's hysterical. Anyways, I appreciate everybody coming in and saying hi. Like I said, the Streamlabs are there for diapers. They're not going to be me going and spending that money on anything other than diapers. 
So if you uh, feel up to it and uh, very much appreciate, put a great question in there. That's what this is. Um, I'm trying to do and look at the thing here. And um, here we go. Uh, Jerry, I cannot wait. When is that college football um, video game coming out? Because I remember that in the old days, they had they had a college football game. And when you have your team, it is so much fun. It's better than Madden. I don't know if EA was doing it or what, but... Anyways, I'm going to try to beat Venom here for a few rounds, and then we're going to go to golf where the Streamlabs really work <laughs> much better because they're horror themed. So when I'm like trying to putt, <laughs> you know what she did? holy crap. Oh, Brennan, thank you for your wonderfulness. There it is. That's what you, the, any, you, you now know what the, uh, when you're, when you're summoning the demon. My friend, Brennan is writing a good question here. Hello there. What Star Wars quote gives you the most guidance in your life? For me, it's when Qui-Gon says your focus determines your reality for obvious reasons. I want to get this quote because it immediately, it immediately um, comes to me. And, um, you know, Before the the sequels, um, I would say that uh, the quote that really would get me... I'll go prequels first. Um, Only a Sith deals in absolutes. Um, That that really affected me when that came out because you you start to notice when people would deal in absolutes and they would say things that would make you go um and so knowing that the sit when when obi-wan says it and it's you know quote unquote tied to the the dark side of the force and people speak in absolutes to you you know it doesn't invite conversation or debate um or compromise and um and that was very very truthful for me and very it guided me so to speak brendan um, do or do not was such a obvious one, but when I saw the last Jedi and I, and say what you will about the last Jedi, I don't want to hear anybody in here. If they, if they don't like it, that's fine. I mean, let's have a conversation, but you know, I, what I don't like is, you know, it's like I say, I like the last Jedi. It's my favorite. It's, it's up there. And as my favorite in my favorite all time, Star Wars movies, top three, um, the other two being Empire and, and the original. Um, I came out of The Last Jedi and incredibly, uh, it, impa- it impacted me incredibly. And this is why, Brennan, the greatest teacher, failure is. Luke, we are what they grow beyond. That is the true burden of all masters. I, I it still boggles my mind that um that the last jedi has gotten as much hate as it as it has um because it's just I, I mean I thought it was a masterpiece. I came out of the and I got to see it early because of Collider and Disney and everything. And I came out of that thing and I went, "Oh, this is going to this is this is like this felt like Empire. This felt like the original Star Wars. It felt poignant and and you know force awakens was great and it brought you back to the magic of star wars but you know i think the force awakens was that that's what it was supposed to do it reminded you of the star wars that everybody loved but the last jedi just really fucking just hit that home and i tell you i grew up as luke skywalker right i grew up he's my favorite character of all time so much so that when i um when i found out that my parents almost named me luke I then went to every single person um, I could find in my neighborhood to tell them that my name is Luke now. It's no longer Mark. My name is Luke. I was that big of a Luke Skywalker fan. And this had to be um, around 1980, after Empire. I do remember it was after Empire. Um, Luke gave me so much. He made me feel, as as the character in the sequel in the uh, original trilogy he he made me feel strong and he made me he 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 gave me confidence he it, like i i just i went if he can do if he can do that i can do i can do anything 
fast forward to 2017 and me seeing The Last Jedi, and I'm at this point now um, a full-blown adult, and the greatest uh, teacher failure is. And so Luke, you know, failing in, um, in his mentorship master to Ben Solo really, really affected me. I remember going home and going to bed. And at the time, we had all three posters of the original trilogy framed in our bedroom. And it was right in front of me, the original, and I'm looking at it now, the original Star Wars poster. And I stared at Luke in that image. And I'll describe it for you here. It's, you know, the original Star Wars poster. It's Luke Skywalker on the rope with Princess Leia in his arms as they're swinging over the chasm. And there's a Darth Vader underneath, which I think is an interesting thing to consider in the poster where Vader's lightsaber is going into Luke in the, in the composite of the shot. Um, and uh, it, it, it just got me. It really, it really made me think, and I, and I couldn't figure out why I was so incredibly moved by this. And then it, it really occurred to me, um, because I had grown up as Luke Skywalker, uh, loving Luke Skywalker, Luke Skywalker of The Last Jedi came to me in my adult years and taught me that it's okay to fail, taught me that you're going to learn from that, the greatest teacher failure is. And that, that is so powerful and I think so important of a message that even even our heroes can fail. you know. And that's why it was hard for me to hear a lot of the criticisms of The Last Jedi when people would, my Luke wouldn't do that. Why not? You know, then you're, then you're taking away this message, for me at least, that you're, it's okay to fail. And I think that's so important to remember because, one, you have to try. You know, you got to try. And when you fail, you learn something. So that, that, that is such a great question. Um, Jerry, I, I, I see you in the chat there, and I, I tend to agree with you about the planning of them. Um, because I feel like, you know, I think Force Awakens and The Last Jedi just play beautifully together. And then, hmm. But that's... That's that's something else, and I think that that really is the uh, Rise of Skywalker. While I love the movie and have watched it now a number of times, and I was a, I was batting around with Rise of Skywalker. I saw it for the first time. I walked out and I said, "My, wow, I love it." Saw it again, and I, I didn't hate it. I don't. I don't really feel like hate as a word should be used for this. I just saw all the flaws, I think. They all really started to stand out for me, and I started to have really good conversations with Mark Fernandez even on, on Rula 2. And then, but then when I, I've come back around and I've, I, I've learned to appreciate what Rise of Skywalker is. However, um, I do believe that there, there, we could have seen the through line from The Last Jedi and that the Rise of Skywalker was more of a reaction to the negativity that The Last Jedi brought in. Basically, it was very studio. It felt like a studio movie. You know, where there was all these people in there kind of putting their little two cents in. Excuse me. Anyways, great question, Brendan. That's what this Q&A is. Um, I would love the Streamlabs there. Because if you throw in a Streamlabs like that, uh, with a question like that, we can have some good conversations. Now, on to Venom. You son of a bitch. Okay, I got it, actually. Wait, get... You son of a bitch. Wait, okay, I really gotta get my... There we go. You son of a bitch. Ooh! Ah, you asshole. Asshole. Look out. No, don't eat me. Mm. I'm going to do this a couple rounds, try to 
fucking beat Venom and then we're gonna go play some golf and be even more relaxed. You son of a bitch. Get over here. No! There we go. Come on over. Come on, Venom. You son of a bitch. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Get out of here. Look out. Oh, really? Son of a bitch. That's right. Come on, bitch. Mm. You get this. Yeah, behind you. Yeah, not not falling for that freaking symbiote thing. Oh no. Fell for that. Mm. Yeah! You're doing it, aren't you? Heal, heal. Not dog heal, but. You can't right. see it now, but we're not so different, man. We're not different. You and me, we're the same. Come on, buddy. Yeah. You gotta stay away from him. When he does that, no, Jesus. That's right. Come on, bitch. Oh, dude, the Truby Sheba. That's right. Truby Sheba. Oh, you missed. You missed me, bitch. Oh, that's an old Eddie Murphy thing. Oh, kill this home karma. Ah, damn it. Stop it. Yeah. Uh-huh. Oh, now he's going to be the wing guy. Oh, motherfucker. No. Heal. Heal. Get out. Fucking. Yeah. Here we go. Look out. Oh, that's hurt. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, fuck. That, 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 that gets me. That gets me. Yeah, just a bunch of pipes. I know, right? That, that's how Toby Maguire beat him. Hey, Kyle. Come on, son of a bitch. Behind you. Mm. Oh, damn it. See? I can do it. Get over here. Do this. Get! Come on! There we go. Oh, no. Heal. And then... Yeah, do that. And then do this. Oh, he's gonna block. You son of a bitch. Look at you. Get out of there. Get out of there. Nope. Don't like that. Not at all. Here, do this. Why are you doing that? Damn it, took a bite of me. You're gonna do it, aren't you? You're gonna send all those symbiote things at me. Little shit. No!
Yes. Get out of there. Oh, I hate that thing. Get out of here. Mm. That's right. You can't see it now. So we're not so different, man. Oh, come on. Mm. Oh, you are an asshole. And oh, there he goes. Are those things? Yeah. Heal, heal. Ooh. This symbiote doesn't care about you. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh no no no! Uh. Oh Christ! Fuck you, Venom. Man. Thrawn 2K. Riley, my man, love you dearly. So happy for you, uh, the direction you're going in. <laughs> Thank you. Excited for kids. Life, love, you hung in there and you deserve it. Cheers. Well, Thrawn. Thank you for that. Aaron is here. Oh, Aaron says that they had just done, uh, one, agree 100%. I'm going to go, I'm going to play golf now. That way I can like hang out more. Because I feel like when I do that, I got to get too focused. Um, oh, I got to check out Poker Face. I know because I've had so many people, um, you know, recommend that. What am I trying to say? Thrawn, I appreciate you saying that. Aaron, I love that you're in here. Aaron, thank you for your wonderfulness on um, Facebook. I saw you there. I finished my script and I put the end. And um, that was so much fun so much fun when you uh, when you finish something like that and I, I realized I was I had been working on monster for sale here's what's interesting Aaron you'll 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 dig this you'll know um so I was uh originally monster for sale came from a Instagram post I, I made when I took a picture of my puppy at the time Leia and she was jumping in the air. We were up on the roof of where we were living at the time. And we had called her Monster because she was a monster. She was just a handful of a puppy. And she was jumping up and looking. She was like, ah! And I caught the picture. And so Leia was, um, so in that freeze frame, I said, Monster for sale. And I made this long post a joke, you know, it's like, you know, she likes to eat socks. She'll do this. She'll do whatever. And um, I remember a friend of mine goes, that's your next screenplay. Great title. And I, and I went, huh? Oh, yeah. Well, I didn't do anything about it for a while, but that, it stuck with me. And then like slowly, slowly, I started to formulate a plan. And then this image came to me. And I'll leave you with that because I don't want to spoil things. But I had this image of a kid, a little boy, sitting at a like a lemonade stand. Like a cardboard box, right? Like Lucy, the doctor, is in. And just sitting there with the words monster for sale written out with the four. Monster for sale. And I got shit I got shivers thinking about that and I said that's a story what is that story a kid trying to sell the monster why why was he trying to sell the monster and then this horror movie started coming to me and so basically Aaron what I was saying is I go back to um so I start writing this thing and it, it was like a horror it started started to be like I I was in a mood apparently. And it was, it was kind of a horror comedy. And I tell you, I remember I was walking Leia of all things again. And, um, I was, it was during Halloween and 
I remember I was walking Leia and I'm like, do your, do your business girl. And I'm waiting and I'm, and there's the sidewalk in front of me, right? It's going down the neighborhood. I live in a great neighborhood with wonderful houses that you can walk and it's like lights up on you know, Christmas and Halloween decorations over Halloween. And, um, so I, the corner of my eye, I see this figure kind of like, like hide. And I jumped out of my fucking skin. I went, what the fuck? And it, it turned out it was one of those hanging, like grim reapers on the tree. And it just had swung into frame and swung out and out of the corner of my eye. I went, and that was the start of my screenplay. I went, oh. There it is. And so, um, why does that seem so loud to me? Your golf, you don't need to take up all the uh, space here. So that, that was what came to me. So I wrote that scene as the very first um, scene of the movie is the inciting incident. Call it Jaws, like when, you know, just a Chrissy gets eaten by a shark and then the story starts, you know? Guy walking his dog gets killed by something. So I start going down that path and I start adding characters and I start doing this and I then then I come up with this idea that's um, over here, let's say, and and it's it's really like it's becoming this horror com it was like all there was a lot of comedy in it and and you know, more gore. And I'm like, that's not the the story I'm telling I'm wanting to tell. Um so I had to so 73 pages in, I went, no, I don't like where I'm going with this. I went back to page one and I did a complete rewrite. And here we are. It took, only took me a year and two months. Uh, John, you're writing which show movie content. Are you a producer? If I may ask, I, I, you can, I have, I can't tell you. I have signed an NDA. Um, I am, <laughs> I work with a company and, um, I'll just say that they're pretty fucking cool shows. I'll leave it at that. I cannot say. Because of said NDA. Because I'm here. Streaming. Yeah, that would be bad if I said anything. So, anyways. Um, but I, I am very lucky. And um, continue to be lucky. And I'm an independent contractor. So, they are... Um, what am I trying to say? They've re-upped me for another year, which is just fantastic. Okay, so streamlabs.com slash Mark Riley. If you, like Brendan did, um, you can throw in a really awesome question there. Uh, that money goes to diapers. Everyone, diapers. <laughs> Aaron, damn, I hate it when that happens. Yeah, you know. It was. You just, when you're writing, sometimes you feel like you're like, this, I, this isn't working this isn't working and what do you do you have to like figure it out fredtastic i am too i'm excited for the drop of echo echo looks fantastic oh thanks aaron uh she is due march 10th we are sending out the um we are sending out the baby uh shower invite we're having a jack and jill baby shower have you ever heard about that jack and jill it's co-ed so we're inviting all our friends um, so there it is. Uh, yeah, we're going to have her March 10th. We might have to, um, induce, plan the thing. The thing I love about, uh, I knew it was going to be a girl. I, of course, am biased and I wanted a boy, but I'm team girl now. I don't know if you can see my button. This is from our baby shower or our, 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 our gender reveal where we just had our family over and we just said, okay, we're just... We had known for a while, but then I was like, we're going to tell our family in a, in a fun way. It just gives an excuse to hang out. Like, yes, Zach, like the classic Adam Sandler movie. Um, but anyways, uh, we got our due date, and they said March 10th. March 9th was my grandmother's birthday, and my grandmother, Mom, um, who was one of the most important people in my life, um, looks over me. Um, I have dreams about her where she comes and visits. Um, but she was so special to me. She was just, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you all know that grandmother, 
or you walk into their house and she goes, I have food for you. Just always supportive, always wonderful. Well, the minute I found out that she was a day after my grandmother's birthday, I went, it's a girl. Kings sport. Cow. Kings, you're a, you're a March baby. When's your birthday? See, she's in such great company. You have no idea. My grandmother, the day before, uh, March 10th is actually the same birthday as my Princess Leia from Star Wars and one of my favorite people in the world, Maya. So, um, like, a couple days later, it's like Emma Fife's birthday and Sam Levine's birthday. We are in fucking great company, let me tell you that. So, yeah, there you go, Thrawn. You bounce or you reformulate. Yeah, you sometimes have to. I was just telling the story of how I was like, I wrote 73 pages of a script, and I went, this is not what I fucking want. I want, I want scary. I want... Something and here, here's what's so awesome. It, like, I had come up with this concept for the main character, and then it's like it just, it's just funny how it works. But um, March 25th, my sister is March 26th. So there we go. We're we're like all over the place with March. Uh, I'm so thankful for everybody coming in. Say hi in the chat. Say hi to all the peeps in there. And if you do want to give, we do. I'm sorry about the super chats. I'm, I'm waiting to, I'm doing more of these. So get my stupid monetization back. Cause I know the super chats, if you want to get highlighted and all that stuff to get my attention. Um, the good news is the stream labs are open. They're working. And if you want to give for the diapers, which is what they are for the streamlabs.com Mark Riley, you can do that. And it's horror alerts and it screws up my game. So we're playing golf. Now we got an eight mile per hour wind. From right to left, a little diagonally. So this thing is going to travel about that much, I think. So I haven't played in a couple days. So here we go. There we are. Look at that. Good shot there. Good shot there. It's a fair way to find it for sure, mate. Uh, the same birthday, two years apart. My father-in-law also has the same birthday as me and my only nephew also same day. March 16th, John. Man, a lot of March 16th, baby. Oh, yeah. All right, so my gap wedge is out. We've got about... Oh, that's a freaking... That's that's close. That's a close pin there. All right. So, you see, I'm going to do about that. And right about there. Let's do this. Not bad. Not bad at all. I was a little too far over though. Yeah, that looked pretty good. All right. 18 feet to the cup. PGA should add a horror, horror alert. <laughs> that's, Kyle, that's good. Yeah, PGA should add horror alerts to their uh, to the game. Can you imagine? You're just getting ready on your backswing. You get a freaking... Ah! All right. It's going a little left to right, downhill. What do we got here? Let's see if I can get this in. Just missed it. Got to go a little bit to the right. Just a smidge. All right. Let's get a birdie here on the first hole. Come on. Come on. Get in the hole. Get in the hole. Fuck you. Oh. Fuck you. Fuck you, game. And that's an opening hole par for this player. Oh, boy. You know what I want to share in this? Uh, I got to tell my... Um, what am I doing? Shabading do dong dee 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 Thank you, everybody, for joining me here. We're just talking. We talked a little bit about The Last Jedi and what my favorite quote was. So if you do want to give a Streamlabs and get a good old question in there, Brennan gave an awesome one, like the quote that means the most most impactful, and I brought up... Um, I brought up uh, Last Jedi, of course. Challenging that bunker down the right-hand side, getting as far down there as possible, and just having a flick with a sand wedge in for their seconds. Nope. 
Ah, come on. Why is it doing that? There we go. There we go. All right, anywho. Yeah, we've been talking about anything and everything. Um, uh, I'll try to, you know, see the chat when I can. The Streamlabs, of course, will get my attention. Um, but, yeah, my favorite quote was that failure, greatest teacher the ma for the master. Zach, my favorite quote from Sausage Party, I believe, came in the credits. It was the end. <laughs> Kidding. <laughs> That's our running gag. He loves the sausage party. There was, um, I was doing some work this morning and we're working on the baby shower and the baby um, registry and all that. And I was fixing the invite and um, I just turned on in the background. It was 21 Jump Street. God, those movies are hysterical. And then 22 Jump Street came on and then, um, and then Neighbors 2 came on, but there was a gag in, um, in um what I, what's it called um the 22 jump street where one of the characters goes into uh, con uh jonah hill's character like contract dispute it's the part where all the sequels the, well, all the pretend sequels so they get seth rogan i thought that was hysterical so zag it made me think of you because of course that's your that's your boy that's your, uh, that's your motherfucking sausage party mastermind. All right, here we go. About 273 is what I'm targeting here. We're at 366 yards. So uh, I'm going to use the old driver. We got eight miles per hour wind from the back. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, hit the fuck out of this thing and see if I can get it close enough where I can like chip in for, uh, for maybe an equal. And Star Wars Alice is here. Hello, Star Wars Alice. You are so kind. How's Obi Wan? Oh, whoops! Yeah, you gotta get go back to the tea box, won't you? All right, here we go. Could Shit! Look at that! Oh, look at that! Three hundred and twenty-seven yards. Yeah, that's what it is. Star Wars, Alice. It's bad, Zach. I'm literally, like, doing a little chip rooney here. 40 yards. Yeah, that's not going to do. I'm going to have to go back. Because I got, I got all that wind. But that's not good. i got to fucking get it in right. There it is. Go, go, go. Get in the hole. Get in the hole. He's in your lap. I love it. And you're watching A New Hope. Perfect. How perfect. So earlier we were talking Last Jedi. Let's see what happens. Uh, off a great question that was sent in to streamlabs.com slash Mark Riley. Um, you can do the same. Send in an awesome thought-provoking question uh, in the streamlabs because it'll buy me diapers. <clears throat> Ooh, boy. Mm, diapers. There we go. A little yeah, bird rooney right, right off the blade, Selmet. Like Minus one. The All right. Feeling good about that. Um, but I'll start going into one of the conversations that I always like talking about, Superman and Superman Legacy. James Gunn came out and said it's going to be all practical effects. Side, it. I don't know, like, how is that possible? Only when the pen is on the center so I imagine they're going to probably do a little bit of what they did with um, in Donner Superman, long. just kind of hang our guy in the air and put a little, put something, you know. I don't know what that means when you say practical effects. In the world we live in now with, with movies, it's like, it's practical? I mean, we need... I'm sure it's going to be like, you know, computer-generated stuff and whatnot, but... Um, 
Second best, yeah. I agree with that. My number three is Last Jedi. Uh oh. I didn't I didn't go far. <gasps> oh, not bad. Come back. Come back. Come back. Come back. Come back. Oh my god, that was lucky. Woohoo! Just six feet between here and the hole. Oh guys, this for two birdies in a row. That was close. I almost Get in the hole. It's in the hole. On a roll here with back to back it's in the hole. Gotta like it. Two in a row. Where's my chapstick? I need my chapstick. It's fucking so dry out here in California. It was so dry. I was getting these random nosebleeds at the like worst times. I was picking up a Jersey Mike's and I went, hey, I'm picking up Jersey Mike's for Mark. And <laughs> Nice tee shot here. A little bit more room to the right than the players really. There you go, right. Alice. However, I love it. That also brings a rough on the Last right Jedi number two. Yeah, I go back and forth. Empire, Last Jedi, Empire, New Hope. But top three for sure is New Hope, Empire, and Last Jedi, depending on my mood of the day. All right, so I'm at negative two here, uh, two under par. I've had two birdies, and uh, we're on the fourth hole. I'm going to go take my driver out here, and I'm going into the wind now, so i got to hit the fuck out of this thing. Here we go. Oh! He got all of that one, which is nice. Very, very excited, though, for Superman Legacy. That's going to be... I love that James Gunn's doing it, but um, my hope is, though, when he... You know, I'm still... I mean, I fucking love his horror tendencies and um, love his Guardians of the Galaxy, but... It's coming straight on. I remember when Volume 2 came out, and it just seemed kind of over the head with a little bit of the humor and jokes. It was like everybody was joking. And then Volume 3 is one of my favorites in Marvel. Might be my favorite Guardians movie. But, um... So, you know, I just want... I, I want the... Guardians works because of the characters, you know, and that humor works because, you know, you have a talking raccoon, for God's sakes. So Superman is a little bit more, you know, humble, I want to say. Superman's a little bit more Americana. Apple pie. I don't know. So I can't wait. My point is I can't wait for Superman Legacy. And I trust him implicitly. So what I don't, who I don't trust is Warner Brothers. They are fucking, they are just, I don't know. After the whole Batgirl and then the Wile E. Coyote thing, and I started watching filmmakers, it, reports came out the filmmakers were like, fuck you, and they're canceling working with them. I, I think they're, I don't know. I don't know what they're doing. My monster for sale script, I want, at Blumhouse, so that's Universal. Which Universal had the best year of their time. This They're the highest grossing studio. Finally beat Disney. Disney was the highest grossing studio from 2015 on. Which makes sense, because that's when Force Awakens came out. And then we had the heyday of freaking Marvel. And um, first year, so... Yeah. Yeah. We shall see. All right, let me try this. Yeah. Okay. Even though wind is in my face, I can hit the hell out of the five hybrid. So I'm going to compensate here. All right, here we go. Pray for me. There we go. Going with the hybrid. Uh oh. <sighs> Yes! Get in there. Get no 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 Okay. Okay. This is an extremely long putt. We might even have to hinge on this one. I might have to hinge on this one. This is a long putt, but it's pretty straight. Look at this. Look at this. Oh, just a smidge. Whoopsie daisies. Alright, hold on. Hold on. I gotta go like, like there. Let's do this thing. 
I don't know about this one. Yeah, I'm way off. Oh, Fuck. Just missed. That's all right. Ah! There it is. This tip is from my favorite superhero from my youth. Fantastic. Those alerts just continue to skip on me. Uh, fantastic. What did I, what did I read? This tip is from my favorite superhero of the youth. Uh, verb from Schoolhouse Rock. I'm a verb. That's hysterical. He was a superhero. Okay, let's head to the Remember Schoolhouse Rock? Yeah, you do, Fred. Now let's switch our attention to Me too. Zalatoris. Coming off a bogey on the last hole... All right, Will Zalatoris chips it in. A shot for the ages. Oh, a shot for the ages, is it? Shut up. Have you seen me yet? All right, so I'm two under par on the fourth hole. I got to catch Ricky Fowler, who's two under and 18. I'll catch him. I'm looking to get back. I'm playing the very hard setting. This is There is no setting above this, so this is for all the marbles now. I'm trying to get... The cup. I haven't been able to win a championship because of the time they put I get to the championship. Fucking hard, man. Alright, here we go. Oh, this one's gonna be I got ten miles per hour wind to my back. This thing's gonna fly. Oh there it went. Yep. Three hundred and nineteen yards. Not bad. He's got around 135. 135. Yeah, I gotta compensate. Do that. There we go. Going with the oh, wedge crap. Here. I didn't freaking bring my arms back straight enough because my thumb was all over the place. I'll tell you what. It's really funny that this golf game is as hard, it can be as hard as real golf. It literally, the control, you have to just do it perfectly. Otherwise, just like your swing. Ugh. Ah. Ugh. Ugh. What's up, Mike? Oh, hi, Mark. Good to see you, Mike, and everybody coming in and having all these peeps here. Uh, like I said, it's q and I'm trying to look at the chat. Best way to get me is streamlabs.com slash Mark Riley. Unfortunately, the... Monetization was taken away from my channel because I wasn't streaming enough, but I'm back to doing it. Um, and those Streamlabs, don't you worry. They're going to diapers. Going to a good cause. Look at this. This is going to be the worst putt ever. It's basically downhill. Um, sorry, I got a text in it. My alert on my computer is like, Fuck, man. All right. Look at this. Yeah, I was way off. It's like so fast. The greens are so fast. Look at that. Look at that. If I miss, it's going to go all the way down here. This sucks. Oh, this is going to be fucking tough. All right. So I'm like, oh, I can't even see because I don't even have the grid. Uh, uh. So about there for that one, and then a whole other square there. I mean, this is just guessing. Oh, fucking here we go. I was trying to do it light. Yeah, not even hard yeah, enough. That you ass nice one to hold. Shut up. All right, there we go. That should be there. Hey, it's a par. It's a par. That'll do. So, like I said, I was talking about some Superman legacy. I hope that um, James Gunn pulls it back a little bit on the humor and the quirkiness. A little bit more straight-laced, I think, for Superman. kal -El. Kal-El, one of my favorite characters. Superman from the movie, 78. Because that, that's the movie that got me into it. The comics came later. I was the kid looking up at Superman standing there going, 
I have brown hair and blue eyes. Well, I guess he has black hair mostly. But when that, yeah, my dad always asked if I dyed my hair because I'd put some gel in it so it would make it darker. I'm like, yeah, dad, I'd dye my hair. I was freaking 13. This is a three-tiered green. All right, we got a fifth, uh, par five here. So this is eagle territory if I can do it. All right. I literally have to look at my controller so I can, like, get it straight. General Leia is coming into the room. Hold on, baby. That's not bad. There we go. Hi, baby girl. Come up here. Say hi to everybody. There's my baby girl. Here's my, my firstborn. Who is named after Monster for Sale. This is This was my... Looking for number two here today. Oh, the baby is here. The baby. Let's see your booty first. There's my baby. You just got the sweetest fucking dog. She is my little baby. She was, um, I don't know, I've told stories of, of Leia. Got her this nice, here, let me show this off, honey. Got the uh, leather pink collar, and she got upgraded to General Leia. That's right. Come here, baby. Put that back on. Uh, got it for Christmas. Um, hey, stop it. Um, yeah, she was, I was telling earlier, the script I finished that I'm rewriting right now uh, is called Monster for Sale. And um, it was off of her. I posted a picture on Instagram where she was jumping up in the air and she looked crazy. And I said, Monster for Sale. And that gave me the idea, or at least the title. And then it slowly started building in my mind, and then I started finally outlining it, and then I started working on it, and then I realized it wasn't what I wanted, and 73 pages in, I stopped and went back to page one and rewrote the whole fucking thing. I think I took one scene, one scene from the original, the rewrite, the, the script from earlier. Thank you for the likes, by the way, everybody. Keep doing it if you can, if you're coming in and saying hi. Hit that like button. It's going to help the uh, algorithm. Um, I'm trying to get the monetization back because my goal is to um, my goal is to be able to not just play video games, but I'll do a video every once in a while where we talk and do something, and maybe I'll upload one or whatever. But I have an idea for a for a video that um, I'm waiting on. Much like I do with my writing, I let things sit and they they. They marinate. And, uh, all right, here we go. Ooh, three wood. Seven miles per hour from left to right. Here we go. See if I can get it on the green. It's not bad. Now, nah, the wind got me. It sucks. Getting ready to play their third. Just two shots behind. Oh boy, let me see. I'm gonna have to chip this in for eagle. Is the wind gonna get me? Is it that? No. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, oh damn it. Well played. Gotta say, his short. John, how many scripts have I written? A, putt away. A lot. Uh, I have one that I wrote with my writing partner Lisa Gottman, who I adore. And we won a screenwriting competition. And um, you can hear my text going off. Um, so that's one. Monster for Sale, two. A Bigger Boat, three. Uh, those are the three current ones. Um, and I can I please turn off my alert for my fucking text message here that's in my ear? I'm sure you're not hearing it, but it is just... Just killing me. Oh, fuck it, whatever. Um, what was I saying? Right. I have a, a comedy as well that I'm going to start taking out. Um, it's called The Bigger Boat, and it's um, a comedy, like I said. And it's what if uh, they remade Jaws and everything goes wrong? I am turning off my fucking alerts for the text. I am blowing up right now, and it's literally just destroying my ear. 
Hold on. Oh boy. Notification sound. Alert sound boop. Notifications. There we go. Nope, that's not it. Where are my messages? There we go. And done. Off. Fuck you. Oh, that was killing me. Uh, yeah, so my comedy, uh, A Bigger Boat, is basically what happens if um, they remake Jaws and everything goes wrong. So, a lot of you maybe know in the Jaws lore, but when they were getting ready to, to make Jaws, you know, they didn't know a lot about sharks, obviously. And at one point, I think they said they thought they could maybe train a shark, and then somebody came in and go, yeah, we can't do that. Well, we live in a time right now where studios are not that smart. And so my my joke to start off the movie, the inciting incident, is to basically shot-by-shot shot remake of the opening of Jaws, right? You have the uh, beach. You have the harmonica people hanging out by the bonfire. Chrissy gets up. She runs to the ocean. The guy follows. He wants to go with her. They strip down naked. He's too drunk. She goes in the water. It's nighttime. Shark eats her, okay? So my script, Bigger Boat, opens. Same deal. Kind of on the beach, following along. Somebody's playing a harmonica, just like the movie. And then we start to notice different things, like one of the couples is making out, and um, all of a sudden she just takes off her shirt, and it's like, and I even make, I have a little commentary in the action, and it's like, it's actually very gratuitous, and you're like, whoa, boobs, immediately, and then there's like somebody drinking a Bud Light, and then they, this tracking shot, like Jaws, as we see everybody at the bonfire, another Bud Light, then there's a neon sign for Bud Light, and I'm making a comment on product placement. And then it pulls back, and it's actually a rave on the beach, and it says Amity Island 2024. I keep updating the year to make it nowadays. And so we see Chrissy and the guy, same dialogue from the movie as they run to the ocean. She jumps in the ocean... Everything's the same, but this time she jumps in the ocean and she starts to run out to the ocean and Taylor Swift's latest song starts playing. Because, right, the movie is about a studio remake, so you got to think they're going to throw out everything at this fucking thing. So Chrissy goes in, Taylor Swift music is drowned out by the Jaws theme, and then right as the shark is about to hit her swimming feet, we cut. We hear a cut, and we pull back and they're filming the first scene of the movie. And we break, we break the um, uh, the fourth not fourth wall, but we break the story. And what they say, the director says, "Okay," he says, "Don't worry, honey. We are going to get the shot now and reveal that Chrissy is played by Jennifer Lawrence. So Jennifer Lawrence is in the water, and she's surrounded by all the the barges and the boats and the the filming and all these things. And so we learn in this thing that they're like, all right." Don't worry. Um, we're going to get this shot of you and the shark. And she's like, I can't believe my agent talked me into this. And I'm like, you're totally safe. We have the shark sultan over there. And he's on the walkie. And we're doing a forced perspective where the shark's going to swim over there. And we're going to see the dorsal fin. And it's going to look like it's right next to you. This is the shot of the movie. And I go, okay. And she's, and Jennifer Lawrence makes some, she's like, I can't believe my fucking agent. And she's like, just get the shot. I'm cold. All these things. We're getting like behind the scenes, fun Hollywood stuff. All right. I got to turn this fucking thing off now. Um, okay. So, and the whole point is, is that it's universal. And the, in a, in a piece of corporate synergy, they have a reality show called the shark Sultan who claims he can train sharks. Okay, that's very important. So Jennifer Lawrence is in the water. Gonna get the shot. They go, action Chrissy. Hi, Leia. Action Chrissy. Jennifer Lawrence swimming there goes, come in the water. And we hear over the walkie, the 
And in my mind, it's Taika Waititi's voice because he just has that funny. And so it like in New Zealand kind of, you know, like it just kind of for me fits this idea that he's the shark sultan. And he's like, yeah, I go now, mate. You know, I, I go real quick. It's like, where's it? And the director's like, where's the shark? And it's like, um, it's in the vicinity. And so action Chrissy, she swims there a moment. And then all of a sudden shark comes under her air jaws, bites her in half. Kills her horribly. Poor Jennifer Lawrence. All on camera. So basically, the inciting incident of my script is the remake of Jaws starts as they're filming the very first scene. They think they can train a shark to swim with Jennifer Lawrence, and that's going to be the trailer, and that's going to be on the poster, and that's going to be their whatever, but the shark fucking kills Jennifer Lawrence, and they have to shut down production for a few days and kind of start over, get a new director, and they go out to my main characters to rewrite this thing because one of them is a Jaws aficionado, i.e. me. And uh, it starts from there. And so if you can imagine, the shark eats the fucking lead of the movie. Like New Zealand, like Jaws 3D. No, that's SeaWorld. Unless it was filmed there. Fredtastic. Um, so anyways, that's, that's the humor of that. You know, it's, 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 it's a satire. So it's by, it's just skewering Hollywood everywhere I can go. Uh, Andy Serkis plays the shark. So there you go. That's, that's my horror, uh, uh, my comedy, a bigger boat. All right. So here we go. We are par, uh, three under par, 10 miles per hour wind behind me. And it's coming like that, so i got to compensate here. Again, you can get questions in uh, to streamlabs.com slash Mark Riley, and they go to a good cause, diapers. Here we go. And also, the horror alerts fuck me up. Okay. Yeah, that's straight down the line, baby. Ooh, look at that. Wahaha, 332 yards? Now let's switch our attention to Will Zalatoris. He's currently in second place. Guy. Oh, that's right. Fantastic, you're right. That guy. That's probably it. There's a funny part, at least I think it's funny, in the, in the movie, uh, in my script, where they go, they bring in the screenwriters and the studio head, who I have in my head is uh, Jeff Goldblum. At the seventh. And he's like giving notes and he's like, yeah, so um, the shark, ooh, we have uh, the shark, maybe, maybe, ooh, the shark is not the real shark, but they find out, wait a minute, it's the baby, right? And that's not the shark, it's the baby. It's the mother shark. And the screenwriter who's a Jaws aficionado goes, you just described the plot to Jaws 3D. And the studio head goes, see, we're already on the, huh, same page. I love that. And then I make another joke for Jaws to Revenge. He's like, he's like, yes, we'll, we'll call it Jaws Rises or, ooh, Jaws the Revenge. <laughs> and my guy goes, ah, mm. <laughs> So, anyways. Love you, Star Wars Alice. See you soon. I have great, I think, I mean, and I've had friends write, uh, read it. And then the, the problem, my uphill battle is I have a manager friend who read it and loved it. And he's like, I don't know what to do with it. And he's like, you, you can only sell it one place, Universal. So probably use it as a sample, but I think that I can get it to Universal sooner or later. And um, they'll, they'll, they could make it and skewer themselves. And I think they would make a lot of money. I do. I think people would want to see it. See a satire on Hollywood. All right, here we go. Not a bad shot there. Uh-oh. Bite, bite, bite. Not bad. Not bad at all. I mean, yes. Yeah, the, the, having Andy Circus as the shark makes me laugh. He swims around with the dorsal fin on and the, and the bobbles. And here's what I added, though. He's method. No, he doesn't get out of the water. <laughs> he just keeps swimming around. Oh, it just makes me fucking laugh. 
Okay. Is this gonna... There it is. That's a perfect... Okay, okay, okay. Get there. Get there. Get there. Oh! Thanks, Fredtastic. I think so. I think it's a fun movie. And I, you know, and it's, if you know Jaws, it's like the, you know, the moments that they do, and you know, it's kind of alluded to in the movie that um, Pippet, the dog, is eaten by the shark because the guy's like Pippet, Pippet, and you saw the dog swimming around earlier. So when the screenwriters get to to set the first day, they're getting the like the volume kind of, you know, they're showing the the a scene. And they show the scene, they show the shark eating the dog <laughs> horribly. And the they're like, you show the dog getting eaten? Again, it's Hollywood. They don't know what they're doing. Ah, fuck. There it is. There's, speaking of, that was Jaws. Oh my lord, that got me. Uh, <laughs> thank you for that oh Christ Ryan Cross Project I think is here there he is thank you my friend oh hi Mark love what you do and thank you for helping me through the script bullshit you're yeah oh man my pleasure dude what's your favorite movie trope storytelling device nothing but love for you Julian the little one yet to come uh, favorite mo uh, movie trope stor storytelling device? Oh, oh, good question. That's a good one. I got to think on it. I'm trying to think what's a good trope that like I want to use. Yeah, you got me thinking on that. What I'm trying to think, you know, I'm not big on jump scares, but I like misdirects and horror. So I do think it's important when you're scaring your audience to lure them in scare them but in a way that I don't like fake jump scares like loud music but I do like in a horror movie the dread and the sense of foreboding you get when you hear a noise and the character whoever they are goes to investigate and as they're getting closer and closer and closer the audience is going, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. And then let's say they pull back the shower curtain and we, the audience, expects the killer to be there. Um, hey, what's up, Ray? Ray Watson is here. Um, thank you, Alan Smithy. Um, the cat trope. Save the cat, right? Is that what you're talking about? Um, I combined two in Monster for Sale. So um, I think what you're talking about on Smithy, let me go back to the chat so I can see. John, I do not have Patreon anymore. I did get rid of it. Here, I'll, I'll get to that in a minute. Um, so... Um, that's really funny. So a trope in horror that I like is to lure an audience member in with a fake scare because I think they go, and then it's, oh, it's, it's just the cat. Cat jumps by or something like that. Um, because what it does for me, um, I think, is that it lures your audience member in, like I said, and as they get closer and closer and closer, and the audiences on bated breath and they're waiting for the scare or the killer or the ghost or the monster or whatever it may be and then it's this and it's uh and you jump and the audience ah, and they laugh and they let out some some 
attention. And that's when I strike. That's when I like to go, fuck you. And the real thing happens. I'll give you an example. In my Monster for Sale, um, they uh, I do that. I have a character kind of hearing some noises and, you know, the trope, something's in the doorway. Oh, I actually changed it to a dog. So it's not a cat, but turns it out to be a dog. And the audience, ah, and the character, ah, and then the monster strikes. I'm hoping that that, and the trope too, like, I better check under the bed. And it's great in horror movies. It's been happening where I, I love this. Like, they open the fridge or the medicine cabinet, and they're, like, doing the thing. And then that moment where they're, they're closing it, and you're like, because <gasps> the killer's going to be on the other side. It's Friday the 13th, it is. It's Jason's right there. It's just kind of like he's he's like a bull in a china shop. But the fake outs are fun, uh, Ryan. Um, and the cat. Uh, there's a great book, uh, Sid Field's Save the Cat, and um, that it's it's a good trope. You want your your character to be likable, and so the, a very simple thing that they say where people can understand it is save the cat. Main character pets the dog, um, you know, helps somebody with their luggage, you know, anything that shows the kindness of your main character. And it is simple as saving the cat is the example given, but I think it can go to anything. It can go to tipping the waitress uh, or waiter, to, you know, uh, if it's a Christmas movie, walking by and dropping some stuff in the, um, in the, you know, the donations or that kind of stuff is the trope that I really like. Oh, look at this. Babe, you got it? Babe. Wife. Julie. What? I'm looking at your text here. What? You got the registration. Online and in person, but the in person is later than I want. Okay. We're and figuring out. Okay. I like that. Sweet. There's some other stuff too. Okay. So we'll wait on we're we're getting serious here, folks. We're getting we're uh, looking at the hospital now. We got to register to go do a walkthrough. We're gonna have to figure all that out. Um. So. Anyways, those are the tropes. Uh. There you go, Ryan. Thank you for that donation, by the way. Um. Really appreciate everybody throwing in what you're throwing in today. Uh, John Myers. No, I did. I got rid of my Patreon because I just couldn't do, uh, I didn't have the time to spare anymore with my job, the baby on the way, the writing I want to do. So I just decided to start streaming. So, you know, in lieu of Patreon, the Streamlabs is there. You know, you can make a donation there. Um, uh, you know, um, I'm trying to figure out a way to incorporate that because my Discord is still there. Um, from the Patreon and everybody's in there so I can figure out something. So um, I would say with just a, um, a $20 or above donation to Streamlabs, if you put your email in there, um, I will invite you to the Discord so that we can all hang out there. I know, hospital tour, right, King? Sounds fun. Um, yeah, the Patreon, I, I wish I was still doing. I still love it. I still have my community there, and um, I just couldn't give the, the time anymore. And the, it was the out, it was the outweigh, it, what am I trying to say? It was the, the funds that were coming in were outweighing the output. What am I, is that right I'm trying to say? It was a small and mighty crew. It is fun. What? It is fun. <laughs> <laughs> my wife King was like it is fun should have added son of a bitch we have to go um, get some sleep alright Ryan thanks brother appreciate your donation there my friend it, it will be fun King we have to do it we gotta see where we're giving birth to my daughter 
Oh boy. <sighs> Fuck you. Oh, I'm in the sand. Sitting at the four under for the day. They currently share the lead in this one. Mm-hmm. Damn it. Fucking to hell. Let's see if I can get it out of the bunker and into the hole. Well, I'm out, at least. <laughs> King, I know. LOL. Just hear her from the other room. It is fun! It'll be fun for us, because, I mean, we're going there to give life. All right, so I'm up for a par. Damn it to hell. I wanted to get a birdie. There we go. Not bad. Uh, shite. All right, got it. Thanks for joining me, everybody. It's Mark Riley here. And so the sands of time. Right? What is that saying? It's the fucking days of our life. Days of our lives like the sands of time. Ooh, I'm in the lead. <laughs> Four under par. All right, Zach, see you next time, brother. I gotta go. I want to watch the football game after this. We're making tacos tonight. I'm still streaming for a while, folks, so settle in. Let's go. All right, here we go. Oh, yeah. I got all of that one. 333 yards. That's one of my biggest drives of the day. There's the driver. I'm going to use the uh, three wood now. Ooh, we got a. Oh, boy. Oh, this will get up on the. Uh, this will get on the. Uh, on the green. I got enough wind on my back here. Oh, just don't go in the fucking thing. Damn it! You can hear the crowd booing. Will it be able to get out of this one? They'll have to channel their inner Severiano Ballesteros here. This needs good hands. Get up there. Okay. I got it. Oh, reach for the putter. Oh, for the putter. You're on the dance floor. Especially when it's for birdie. Gotta make this birdie. Yeah, uh, just a little off. Get in the hole. Get in the hole. Booyakasha. I know, jinx. Like sands through the hourglass, so are the days of our lives. Haskell got it. Haskell, my friend, how are you? Wow, what a save. All over the parking lot, but a chip in for par saves the day. Shut up. And now we can take a look at how that play affects the leaderboard. Well, this is where the knees start to knock. I'm at five under par, and I'm leading the tournament so far. No, I'm saying. How you doing, my friend? Good to see everybody. Keep their head down and keep going forward. Cannot think about that lead or people will pass them. Yeah, yeah, that's correct. So I'm not going to. I'm just going to drive the hell out of this thing. Look at that. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Oh, it hit a horrible fucking spot. Fuck you. Fuck that fucking game. Oh, I hate this game sometimes. Okay, let's get back to it, shall we? You hit it straight and it hits a little bump. Yeah, this lies pretty deep here. Fuck you, man. God. Oh, that sucks. I don't even know if I'm going to be able to fucking get this. Yeah, that's going in the sand. Because it's so deep in there. I'm doing okay, Haskell. Until this hole, fuckers. Oh, no, I mean, you got COVID. Oh, man, 102 temperature. I'm sorry to hear that. Get. Oh, I fucking hate this. God. Get in the hole. Damn it for Christ. That's a wonderfully played chip shot there. I don't know if you can tell, but I love this game and I get pissed at it all the time. For a bogey. 
fucking bullshit. The game has been very impressive. They've been really sharp today. Shut up, dude. Well, Ugh. Bogey. Plays a bogey. The rest of the field buoyed now after that drop shot by our leader. All because of that bounce. Hit the straightest drive, and the fucking thing bounced that way into a goddamn fucking son of a bitch. Right. Kidding. Not really. There's just not I'm a pissed. lot of room on the front of it. Even the back section, which it does right. get a little bit wider, so, it still is very small. All right. A I'm going to have to hit the hell out of this thing. All right. Here we go. If not, just find the green two putt, make three, move on. Oh, boy. Look at that. Not the result they were after there. Needed to take a little less club on that approach. Uh, I just listened to my caddy. Fucking cocksucker. Oh, look at this. Look at this. Get in the hole! Bogey and McCall. Damn it. Alright, this is this is pissing me off. Fucking not going my way right now. Hang on, this looks pretty handy. Oh, hang on. It does look pretty handy. You better not curse like that. I have a daughter on the way. <laughs> Trailing by a stroke after that hole. We head to the 12 hole. This par four is as big and as strong and as tough as you find anywhere on the PGA Tour. All right, this all right, all right. Okay, you're freaking. Shots players will face out here. They know they have to hit a all right, so. tee shot, a long tee shot to have any Shut chance up. or hope of making birdie here. You miss it a little bit out to the right. The rough over there is for Oh, I got all of that you one. That should be okay. Yep, there we go. Back right 303 yards, not bad. The second shot so much more imperative to not get it above the hole. Second shot, leave below the hole at all costs. All right, here we go. I'm not my hybrid. I can hit the hell out of it. So I'm going to have to Compensate. All right, here we go, everybody. Where are we? Looks to be going with a hybrid here. See? Look at that, you son of a bitch. Uh, that's disappointing. Gotta Look at that. I went all the way back. You're a fucking asshole. You're a fucking asshole, man. You fucking asshole. And here we are with the third shot. All right, I'm gonna chip no this in. I'm gonna stop here. effing around here. Oh! Let's see if you can make this. Keep the power on the car. So upset. I'm so upset at this stupid, worthless game. God. All right. There. Here's your fucking par. Oh, nice looking part. God. And in Jerk wads. Uh, anyways, it's Mark Riley here. So thankful to have you all here. This is awesome. Um, thank you for those who have donated to my Streamlabs. They're going straight to the diaper fund. Uh, Streamlabs.com slash Mark Riley. They have a, a horse, uh, horror alerts. So <laughs> they fucking scare that out. Every single time. I God, right, Jesus Rich. Christ. All right, here we go. Oh, I can maybe make up for it now with the par five. Let's see if I can pull off an eagle. Not bad. Oh, shit. Yeah, look at that. Nice. Oh, no way. This is way this far. Could be one of the most difficult third shots on the PGA Tour, bar none. Not a bad shot there. Uh oh. All right, we're okay. We're okay. That's some good golf right there. That's some good golf. That's some good golf right there. I love these these announcers. They're so, they're hysterical. The 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 other guy, not the the English or Australian or whatever the hell he is. Um. I love it. My favorite thing is this guy starts telling stories about like Tiger Woods and like I go through like three holes before he's done with his fucking story. I'm like, 
wrap it up, dude. It's like, come on. All right. Let's see. Lob wedge. Okay. Oh, you are a fucking bullshit. I don't understand that. I do not understand that at all. Fuck you. Ugh, I fucking hate you so much. And every lie is terrible. It's like I'm in the, I mean, like cabbage. <sighs> yeah, I better drop this. Otherwise, I'm going to throw my controller out the window. Ugh. Damn it. Fuck. Uh, you better get in that hole. Thank you. And Fuck you. Is. Oh, and there it is. Uh, looking at the chat and whatnot, say hi, um, if you haven't already. Um, again, streamlabs.com slash Mark Riley is there. They're finally working again. I don't know why that happened the other day. I had to go through support, and they're like, oh, we need to, you need to fill this out and update this. I'm like, why? Why? Why was it working, and now it's, but that's beside the point. Uh, but I've been talking about, uh, a little Superman, a little Star Wars, and, uh, my script. Very excited about it. I'm currently on a scene now. Let me actually look at it real quick. See where I'm at. Yeah, page 37. And I'm like, I'm having to... It's the first time I've gotten here and I went, oh, okay, I'm going to have to figure this out. And I have to have a little... So, writers out there, you might know. I mean, sometimes you got to just kind of sit on it, let it percolate. Marinate, whatever you want to call it. Oh, yeah, I was here. All right, let's go. Fucking let's dance. Ooh, that was good. I hit the frig out of that. Yeah, that one will play. Yeah, that one will play. Yeah, damn right it will play. He's currently in fourth place. I think I'm still in tied for first. This shot is about 140 yards out. Wind coming right at him. Oh boy, wind is coming right at me, so I'm going to have to compensate a little bit, a little bit, like right about there. And uh, let's hope to God he can do this, all right? I've got about 142 yards, and I'm using my 9-iron. Um, I appear to be from London, uh, playing in this tournament. I feel like I'm like Russell Brand's character from Forgetting Sarah Marshall, which I watched the other day. Not to bring up that name, because I know he's a kind of a piece of shit. But I like to talk like this. Alright, here we go. Oh boy. <sighs> Get down, yes. Not bad, not bad at all. Alright. I need this birdie. I need it. Need it. Get in the fucking hole. Yeah, that's right. That's good. That's right, right there. Yes. Get in the this hole. Tracking right into the front of this cup. Yes. Hope everybody's enjoying their 2024 year so far. What everybody do for New Year's? I uh, took the wife for a nice dinner. Leia's coming to say hi. Come on, baby. It's right across the 15th. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You want to come up here? Wait, wait, wait. This right is here. One. I love it as when she just randomly wants work, to come in and say hi to Daddy. Twice the size if you this is my office where I work. I get to, I work at home mostly. I go into the office every once in a while. This is um, the meanest hole and I write and I stream, obviously, here. Meanest. But Leia likes to come in just randomly. Hole, She'll just. Job well she done, likes it. We have a uh, this Shay's lounge couch, and it goes right by our patio, and she just stays on that fucking thing all day, staring out into the world, mostly to, at the squirrels. But she's my little guard dog. She's my my sentry. 
She just sits there. What's that? You better not do anything. What's that? She's so fucking cool. What are you doing, Brody? Come here. Let's show you off. You got two dogs, one for each of you. We watched Tombstone the other day. God, I love that movie. All right, here we go. My dogs are currently in a standoff in the doorway to the office. It's hysterical. Oh, boy. That worked. Seriously, what did everybody do for New Year's? I don't see the chat working. Come on, give me something. We went to an awesome dinner at Mastro's Steakhouse for New Year's. And um, that's about, I'm going to stay right about there and just hope to God it doesn't go. Uh-oh. Fuck you, man. Fuck you. They're looking to get this one close in hopes of saving par. Such an asshole thing. Not bad. Uh, so yeah, we uh, Mastros. We went. We got dressed up to the nines. We wore suits and dresses and looked good. The wife drove so that I could uh, have a drink and like a twenty-year scotch. 20, 20 year age scotch and then I had a, a glass of Cabernet Sauvignon for my dinner with my steak and I got bone in I got a bone in filet mignon we had mac and cheese which was delicious and we had asparagus the bread was fantastic and then we started with the crab cake that crab cake was one of the best fucking crab cakes I've ever had damn good okay can I get an Ooh, damn it almost there all right, let's let's dance. Go go, bitch, get in there. The putt drops. Now at five under, heading down the stretch. Now at five under. Fast finish required if they want to win this thing. Yeah, I know. I know. Just I'm working on it. After that hole. Oh no, I gotta I gotta get some birdies. Somebody's taking over. Course, but but they're at eighteen, so I got three holes left. The oh, green no. is big inside, oh, but shit. it plays awfully small because there's really small sections to this green. The front, the back right, and the top left. If you find the right section, job well done. If you don't, it's going to be a difficult two-putt, to say the least. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. Come back. Will you come back, please? The Fuck you. I really hope All right, so it's going it. that way, and then it goes that way. So it might just be straight. No, no, go back, go back, go back. Yes, 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 yes. Damn it, damn it, damn it. Oh, this is hard. Oh, this isn't good. All right, so we got 32 feet, so I got to go. I got to go right about there. Alright. Here we go. Oh shit. Oh Christ. Oh no. Get in the hole! Fuck you! 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 God! Fuck you! Just one stroke back and right in it. Oh. oh, that was a touch of class. We haven't seen that again. Oh, putting from the rough, no less. <laughs> I'm losing people. I can see it. Everybody's asleep. I've asked what you did for New Year's, and everybody went crickets. I'm lulling you to sleep with this golf game. We're almost there, folks. Once I'm done here, I hope to win. I'm going to call it, and I'm going to go make this be about a two-hour stream, which I love. And I thank everybody for joining me here on a wonderful Saturday. Got to send some invitations out for the baby shower. It's called the Jack and Jill baby shower. Basically, 
co-ed. So we're inviting everybody. Inviting all my friends. The, penultimate hole at the usual suspects. Not a long path for, but the danger lurks everywhere. Mike, boring New Year's. You stayed at home with the family. It was chill. Oh, well, that's that's my future, baby. I love staying at home with family, so that's going to be something. But um, boring, I get, yeah. You watch any movies, Mike? What's a New Year's movie? I always pick a horror. Mike, <laughs> God, I hate this game so much. You're watching football, Haskell. Yeah, New Year's nights are different after kids, I bet. I know. Haskell, you're watching football. One fantasy football championship came in second in another. I love that. Uh, then your FWB <laughs> pooper over for a bit. You're friends with benefits. Oh, look at you. That's a hell of a New Year's then. Can't complain about that. Sitting at five right? In their round. Currently oh, tied boy. Now, I'm going to have to club up on this one. That's 10 miles per hour. That, that will, the wind will hit it. All right, so let's let's hope to God I got this right. Get there! Oh, you fucking asshole! Fuck sure you! The fucking wind! And coming up well short. They need to get up and down from here. Just one stroke off the lead. Nothing like a little. Oh, you! F I did that so wrong. Fuck you, you cocksucker! And just one shot off the lead. God, I fucked up my game. John, have a great night, my friend. Thanks for all your kindness in the stream, as always. You're just such a nice guy. Fuck. I really just blew this. I just lost the game. I just lost the tournament. I just fuck, fuck you with your fucking wind. I just dropped a shot, too. Oh, my lord. Where am I? God. Oh. Uh, the only thing I can do here is get a bogey or uh, get an eagle. So, all right, I'm gonna fucking. You can, but you have to thread your drive in between those four fairway bunkers that line the fairway. From there, now you have to think: Do I want to take on this flag with the bunkers right, bunkers left, and certainly mm. the water in front? It's a daunting second shot, but if you're <sighs> this is not going to get up on, there in two. You could reap massive rewards. You are. If that was never going to be their way. Sadly, this one will make a splash. I hate this game. This game is a bullshit game. Fuck you. That thing was straight, and the wind took it in the goddamn fucking thing. You're an asshole. I've lost everything about this game. Fucking hate you. Fuck you and your 68. Yeah, and I missed it, so good. 69 it is. Fuck you. Fuck this game. <laughs> well, that's it for me. Dropped all the way down to three under par. Yeah, I know. It's all right. Hey, John, again, take care. Blessings to the family. I appreciate it. And blessings to all of you. Um, Mike, The Holdovers is my favorite movie of the year as well. So a um, little more chatting before we go. Um, um, the wind got me on that one, wouldn't you know? I want to get that out of there. Um, yeah, The Holdovers are... Uh, is one of my favorite movies. Um, just absolutely crushed me when I saw it. It just hit all the right spots. I cried a number of times.
because I'm I don't know about any fathers out there um, who when they're when they realize their wife was pregnant I've been emotional <laughs> very emotional person I cry at the drop of a hat now and uh, what are you doing in there ah it's taco time baby I know they're frozen I'm going to defrost some chicken. I'm going to put it on the grill. We're going to make some tacos. Um, but yeah, I loved the holdovers. I wonder if I still have it here, my uh, top 10. No, I think I removed it. I did. But yeah, um, the holdovers was my number one. Oppenheimer was my number two. Anatomy of the Fall, huh, was okay, Mike? I got to Yeah, I've heard about it. I got to check it out. Uh, Alan Smithy, it was so nice to have you in here. Yeah, because it's not... Well, yeah, it's less stressful. I hate golf when you're having a shitty game in real life, like when I played with my dad. I played a couple days before New Year's. It was like a week for... It was like Wednesday. It was a Wednesday. Every time I hit the ball, he was like, you know what you need to do? He got in my head, and I had to tell my dad... To shut his mouth. I hit a two. I hit this beautiful drive. It was like two hundred and twenty-five yards. And straight as narrow, perfect. And he goes, "My God, that was great." I don't know how you do it though with that swing. So what you need to do? I'm like, you know what? You shut your mouth. Um, what's the most disappointing movies you were anticipating? I had high hopes for the creator, and it fell short. Um, I had heard good things about the creator. I mean, I kind of heard that. I liked the creator, but I didn't. I wouldn't call it like a great. Um, for me, no, anticipating and then kind of disappointing was um, Maestro. I'm gonna be completely honest. We still haven't finished it because every time we start it, we we start getting into it, and then it's just it doesn't hold my attention. I don't know why. And that's the problem, I think, with these movies now that come on streaming. You are left with a lot of distractions. So the movies need to get you, and that's what I'm going to say. The holdovers, I couldn't turn it off. I couldn't. There was nothing that was distracting me because this movie was so good. You can hear my wife yelling at the dogs. Um... I need to see Godzilla as well. I'm dying to see it. Now my uh, Ellis just came out online and, and just he he invoked the holy jaws uh, uh, comparing it to. So I was like, I got to see this movie. And it's like, now I'm dying to see this movie. So um, with that, folks, I'm going to call it a night. Uh, nice two hour stream here. Thank you so much, everybody, for coming in, saying hi. For the donations that came in, I really, really appreciate it. Um, if anybody watches this, if they want to do it before I go, uh, it is streamlabs.com slash Mark Riley. Uh, appreciate it. It supports the channel. Goes to uh, a good cause. Uh, oh, Brody's here. He wants to say hi. Come here, Chief. Come here. Look at my big boy. Oh, the boy. The boy. With his nice new red collar. Yeah, my boy. Oh, you're such a good boy. He's such a good boy. You're my big boy. My 85-pound lab. Yeah? Say something. You're licking the microphone. Thank you. Okay, hold on. I'll be right out. All right, everybody. Uh, again, appreciate all the donations that did come in. All the kindness in the chat. Seeing all the familiar faces that um, have been supporting me for so many years. I really, really appreciate it. I do these streams now as much as I can. Uh, I'll do more as the new year goes on, do more um, different conversations and um, a few that might just include uh, the, your usual show, Riley's Cantina. Can't wait to do that. So um, again, appreciate everybody who came in and said hello. Um, stay safe out there, as I always say. Happy New Year, and I uh, look forward to seeing everybody next time. Bye-bye now.